Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Butterfly Effect podcast. And today we are reacting to your comments to a poll that we put out a little while ago about heavy rain. It reads as follows. Did you like the big twist in heavy rain? Tell us why in the comments for an upcoming video. So this is that video. We're going to start off because we have got the results here. Uh, the first option being yes, it was a killer twist. And then the other option being no, as many holes as Swiss cheese. So, mate, did you want to reveal the winner of that poll? Yeah, so uh, the YouTube poll, we have 70% said yes, they liked it. And 30% said no. And that is across 171 votes, which is a lot of votes for us. So thank you very much for everyone who submitted that. So yeah, over like, you know, mainly positive, mate. 100%. I mean, it's funny because I mean, we had, we did do the Reddit poll as well. Uh, there was 21 votes, 11 picked yes, it was a killer twist, and 10 picked no. So yeah, there's a big divide there, even just from like the YouTube community and the Reddit community. It was a lot closer in that other poll than it was in our one. But we're going to get straight into the comments now. So we're going to start with Tatjana's comment who said, oh, I loved the twist. Yes, it definitely has some holes, but I still think it was implemented surprisingly well and makes for a shocking reveal. Plus, it's so unique to have a villain protagonist that I honestly wish more games would do that. Honestly, if I had to put it in a nutshell, I basically agree. That's exactly what I think. The fact that you have a protagonist, and you know what? I was even thinking about this. Like, do you think this game came out in, what, 2010, right? And you yeah. had a protagonist and the killer. It's funny, I feel like maybe Heavy Rain set like a little bit of a trend because I then you then skip forward to Until Dawn where obviously you've got Josh as the psycho. Again, sort of a playable character if you count the Doctor Hill scenes and obviously that bit where you're walking around as Josh. And they're mate, not a killer, but do you know what I mean? Like they're pretty close to it. They're certainly a tormentor. Scream 4, my favourite Scream film, where like sorry spoiler alert for anyone that hasn't seen it but basically the lead killer is jill which is like sydney's niece i think or cousin and she was revealed to be ghostface which again was probably not expected and was a bit of a twist so like it was funny just in this period like there was a little bit of that protagonists being revealed as like the main villain but yeah as far as the rest of it it definitely has some holes me personally though, I'm willing to overlook them. I'm gonna go over to Slashine next, who says, I love the fact that the character we were playing from the start ends up being the main villain. I thought it was very well written as well. Did not suspect a thing, even though when you replay it, it all makes sense. Yeah, so I agree with you, Slashine. Now, the thing I always mention, sorry if you're sick to death, if you're a long time viewer and you always hear me say this, but um, I played uh, this game with Jack and it was Jack's blind playthrough. And he was playing as Scott and he just said out loud, I really hope whoever this origami killer is, is a character we know. And I was thinking at the time, like, I can do you one better. You're playing as him right now, I was thinking to myself. So, yeah, like, I just think that that happened just shows you how incredible it is. Just the fact that it happened literally right under our noses. But also, yeah, just the fact that, like you mentioned, when you play it back, certain scenes are really clever. And, yeah, it does make sense. But, like, Suicide Baby, Hassan Shop... Those chapters are like really clever the way he's actually going in and like collecting the evidence back rather than collecting the evidence to discover the case. I thought it was a really cool twist having the PI as the killer. Um, yeah, and like, yeah, there are plot holes in it and I'm sure a lot of you fans going forward in this video are gonna point them out, so we'll get to those as well. And next up, we're gonna go for Cod Patrol, who says, I've seen him in two movies as side characters, just small roles that you would never realize unless you knew the details properly drives Tom Crusade's character in a taxi and eyes wide shut. It's interesting you mention that because I never knew it was Sam Douglas, but I've seen Sam Douglas in a few things as well. Bad education here in the UK. Um, and also he is in like the odd video game. So like he, he is in As Dusk Falls, which is a game that a lot of you have been asking us to play. So it looks like we might be seeing Scott Shelby again, mate. Brilliant stuff. Uh, we're going to move on now to Ben Monk, who says the twist is amazing, especially on a second playthrough, because there are subtle hints when playing as him. A good example is when you're in the shop and he takes the box with the tasks inside. Absolutely. I mean, I really like how they did it in the blind playthrough anyway, 
how like they harked back to some of those moments. But even when we was doing the analysis and we knew what the twist was, there was things in like the trivia section where like I think one of them was that Scott wasn't Scott should not have known about the whole incident with Ethan and like his son getting taken because it hadn't been on the news or something like that. But the fact that he you know, mentioned it openly to the shopkeeper was like a, a subtle hint. Even the conversation with Lauren when, albeit we did say it was a little bit of a flaw with the thought system, but you know, when he says that I understand what you're going through, you can read into that because he sort of does because of like what happened to his brother, you know, um, and obviously she's like thinking about her son. So there are like certain little subtle hints in there that are fun to pick out on a second playthrough. So I'm completely with you, Ben. Next up, we have just a uh, 3105. The twist on the meta level is insane. Having a main character as the killer will always gain a reaction out of your audience. Think Jill from Scream 4, let alone a playable one. I remember never even considering Scott as an option before the reveal and being mind blown. It even shaped my viewpoint going forward as I was able to predict the Josh reveal in Until Dawn. And I don't think I could have without this twist. Yes, it leaves some plot holes, but none big enough to ruin it in my personal opinion. You know what, Justa, I'm just going to say out of all the comments, this is probably the one I relate with the most. I mean, not only have we, as Jack already mentioned, Scream 4 and, uh, you know, the, the twist in Until Dawn as well, but I think you're completely right. I mean, I'm not going to lie, I, we're going to get into the negative comments later on in this video, and I, I completely understand them. People who trash, you know, the twist, I really understand their viewpoints. Some of the plot holes, like in theory, can be borderline dumb but i agree what you mentioned about having you know the main character as the killer always going to gain a reaction and i just feel that like the twist was so mammoth and enjoyable that i just feel like that twist outweighs the flaws so um yeah it's like i i know the flaws are there but as jack and i have said countless times i'm willing to overlook them because of how enjoyable i thought it was because same here, I really didn't think it was Scott. I know I've seen people say they predicted it was him and people said, oh, it's so easy to sort of think it was him. Not in my opinion. I really had no clue it was him. I really got like mind blown by this twist. So yeah, just I'm completely with you here, mate. Okay, so Sonia says, well, she has two comments. I'll take the why uh, she liked it. So I like the fact that the killer is not only someone we know, but someone we are actually playing as. We got emotionally invested in this character and it makes the twist that much more impactful. It makes us question why and how could you. The shock is big and that's why I like it. I mean, completely agree. Completely agree. I mean, it's what we've said already about being the playable character, but certainly the emotional investment. And I think there was one particular bit that it was really clever at. So A, like you've got the whole scene in the shop when, you know, Scott's the one in a vulnerable position, so you're naturally aligned with him. But in a similar bit like later on in the plot when Kramer puts him and Lauren in the car you know we did have the scene before with like the fight with Norman and there was very eagle-eyed people that noticed that the killer had a bigger frame because of the shadow so those that maybe did clock that it could be Scott it was then followed up with a scene where he nearly died he was potentially drowning and perhaps that brought people back onto the side of you know sympathizing with him or at least questioning, mm, maybe it's not Scott, you know? So the fact that, yeah, that they played around with our emotions there, I think that that was really clever on Quantic Dreams part. Um, Sonia also weighs it up with why they don't like it. And we have a bit of a bigger paragraph here. And uh, in a nutshell, mention something which we couldn't, you know, not include in this video, guys. It's the Manfred chapter. Um, I'm not going to go too into detail of why I hate it. You can check our analysis series for that, for where I absolutely blast this chapter. Uh, yeah, it, it's dumb. I hate everything about this chapter. And the thing is with Scott's, like, whole story is that a lot of it, like, it was going well with Hassan Shop, Suicide Baby. And I really like the fact as well they kind of give him something to do with the Kramers because that kind of, you know, distracts him and sends him on another tangent and you can kind of get that from a serial killer perspective not appreciating having a copycat but this Manfred chapter is just the stupidest one and yeah I just not a fan of it I can give it its own video honestly with how much I hate it and yeah it what you're saying is right when you replay the game a lot of other stuff doesn't make sense I am going to hold my tongue on that one because there's a comment that's going to come later on which talks about his thought bubbles so yeah and, and that that you could also ties into that argument as well so thank you very much for your comment 
So Elite Ninja 666 says, kind of did and kind of didn't. I don't know. I guess I kind of did because his brother was actually killed all because they deadbeat of a father never helped his brother. But yeah, I understand why Scott did what he did, but that don't mean to take somebody else's son though and by drowning them, even though it's a good game. I beat the game, got some endings done and I enjoyed the game. Yeah, like... <sighs> It's something that we brought up in the analysis. I did find it a little bit odd, especially when he's explaining it to Ethan at the end, how like he's basically testing fathers, which from a logical point of view, I understand because his father was absolute trash. He did nothing to save his baby brother. I mean, why to then go and amplify your father in a way and then test other fathers and, you know, you know, essentially kill their children, I find a bit odd, but I'm guessing, you know, we are working with the mind of a serial killer. Um, but yeah, like, the you know, the, the logic for it, like, especially when you think early on in the game, he saw Ethan dive in front of, you know, Jason to stop him getting hit by a car, but then he's putting Ethan through the mill again with Sean. You know, it's a little bit confusing, like, why is that the case? So, I mean, it's like I said at the top, I'm perfectly willing to overlook it, but I do concede that, you know, there are flaws, you know, in terms of, like, Scott's writing there. Uh, next, we have Anteater, who says, I like it on paper, but the execution of him being the killer isn't good, in my opinion. My biggest gripe about it is probably the fact that you can listen to your character's thoughts in the game. Are you telling Scott is changing his own thoughts just to trick the audience into thinking he's a good guy? They could have fixed it by either removing that feature or making it that Scott had split personality or something feel like that would have been more effective. And Anti, you're perfectly right. Um, I completely understand your point. This is something Jack and I mentioned in our analysis series. Like, from the moment we're introduced to the thought bubbles, I defended them in a way because I really like the art style of it, how they circle around your head, like they are literal thoughts in your brain, and the way that you, you can be playing the game without having to hit pause. You can literally keep walking and you can hear your thoughts and it helps you and it's nice as like a little objective marker. A lot of games you have to hit the pause menu, find out what your objective is. This one you can read your thoughts while you're still walking and your character can say it out loud in your head. And I really like that from kind of an art perspective and like, you know, just creativity. But in terms of like the fact that they had this twist, it almost goes against it and I completely get what you're saying. There's times in like, you know, his apartment where he says stuff like, I haven't been sleeping well since the murder's begun. It's like, wake up buddy, you're the one who fucking did them. Um, and then he says stuff like, oh, I should go and check on Manfred why he's taking so long. So like, you've just killed the fucking guy. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense. And a lot of people think it is to trick the audience. And you could call that cheap, that you're kind of going it from that perspective. Like, oh, let's just completely write him off as like not being the killer, being a good guy. So yeah, like you could say it is a little sort of deceitful to the audience. And I feel like the simple way, I, I wouldn't even go for your idea of doing the split personality. I reckon you could go even simpler by just having his thoughts be vague or maybe not giving him that, that many. Maybe just sort of giving him something like, oh, I've got to get a glass of water for Lauren without having to say shit about him sleeping issues and stuff. Cause it just doesn't make sense when you go into too much detail. So yeah, Auntie, a uh, very logical point. Thank you for your comment. Uh, so yeah, we've got a comment here from Luna as well, who says, just in general, it's a predictable twist. Having someone seemingly just want to solve things and be likeable and dependable only to be the big band in the end, it was like highly likely to be a playable character or at least someone who was present from very early in the story, behind everything since we'd know them and no one else really in the game that it could be. Now, this is an interesting comment because... I did get fooled by the twist. I certainly didn't expect it. Admittedly, it was my first entry into Quantic Dream, and maybe I should have been a little bit more savvy to it, but having you know played Until Dawn previously, the potential for you know playable characters to be the villain. But I was just sold by the character of Scott, and I just didn't think on that front that you know him going round collecting pieces of evidence was to destroy them. I really didn't get it. Um, well, I, I did mention this in the analysis series that maybe I should have clocked that there was like two detectives that we were playing as and that should have been a bit odd. Maybe I should have thought that mm, maybe one of them isn't quite what they seem. But, you know, I just, you know, I forgive myself for that because I wasn't necessarily thinking along those lines at the time. 
but yeah, I mean, it completely did me. So I mean, you're obviously onto something there, Luna. That you, you know, you was able to predict it as much as you did with Scott. Yeah, no, very good, Luna. The other thing I wanted to mention in your comment that I enjoyed what you put in is you mentioned stuff about Lauren about how it's risky that he keeps Lauren around, possibly saving her, knowing that she could incriminate him and has motive to do so. Um, and then later on, you mention. You have no reason to talk to yourself about that. You don't have to put up an act for Lauren in your inner monologue. Now, it is true, like, a load of people do criticise the fact why would you keep Lauren around? Like, because he, he has this companion when, you know, at the end of the day, like, the guy's a serial killer. Like, a serial killer wouldn't have a companion with them because they need to do their mission. Um, and I think for certain stuff, it, it almost makes sense because, like, throwing her off the scent and stuff because, like... Whether it's the Kramer stuff, you generally like want to tackle, like sort out this copycat killer while you've got someone with you. And I know they mentioned a bunch of stuff about how Lauren potentially reminds her of her mother, but it almost is a bit dumb because it's like you can't feel sympathy for someone when you're the one outright causing it. Um, and then again, I just go back to the Manfred scene, bringing Lauren with you to this Manfred scene where you're going to kill the person there just makes no sense. It's so risky. See, I completely get that point as well, Luna. And the final comment, which is on Reddit from Taco the Kid, said, No. Big Twist is about as effective as winning a modern day dance contest using the twist as your dance. Really hate how this game left so many plot holes, especially after removing the supernatural elements that were supposed to explain the blackouts. Ooh, that's interesting. Removing that made the game a massive hole for me. Still love this game and continue to play it. However, I mean, I, yeah, glad that you still continue to play it because I still think it's an amazing game regardless of like the plot holes and stuff. One thing I'm, I would disagree with you on that front is the supernatural elements. Me personally, I'm glad they took it out because I think what makes Heavy Rain so gritty, it's just like the, it is the groundedness of it. And I just wonder if there was a supernatural fantasy element, I don't think that would have fitted, me personally speaking, in the world that they, you know, that we was presented with when we played the game. To have that like little side thing. I think they probably went far enough with like the ARI glasses. But again, if you're thinking about like virtual reality, that was around the corner in 2010 anyway. So you could perhaps buy into that a little bit more. But the supernatural thing, I'm not so sure about. And Maximum Prime says no. And there we go, guys. That concludes this video with uh, all of your comments and reactions to the big twist in Heavy Rain. I did want to say a big thank you to everyone that did vote in the poll, both on YouTube and Reddit. And of course, everyone that commented. We wanted to get through all of them in this video. We hope you like it. We hope you, you know, respect our replies. And uh, yeah, we will see you next time. See you guys.